back and we're playing it safe without an audience this week. Uh, the story I'm about to share with you, though, is simply unbelievable. It all began late last year at Seattle's Climate Pledge Arena during a hockey game. A fan in the stands who happens to be an aspiring doctor noticed an unusual mole on the neck of one of the guys working with the opposing team. It was a quick glance, uh, but she went above and beyond to let him know what she saw. And thank goodness she did because it ended up saving his life. We have them both dialed in right now. Please welcome Nadia and Canucks Assistant Equipment Manager, Red. Welcome, y'all. Hello. Hello. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> Nadia, I'm going to have to start with you because, look, at a concert, it's hard enough to see people holding up signs, like anything in, a, in an arena. Like, the fact that you saw that mole from that far away, like, how, what was that whole experience like? Yeah, so it was the very first Kraken game ever. They're a brand new hockey team, and they were playing the Canucks, which was super exciting for me because I'm Canadian American and I've rooted for the Canucks my whole life. And to uh, you know, now I live in Seattle and I have to root for the Kraken. Uh, but really, we we got amazing seats uh, right in front of the plexiglass. And this this man, a stranger, uh, happened to be working on the Canucks staff and. During one of the moments where he stepped in front of me, he kind of outstretched his hand and I his, his jacket fell down just a couple of inches and I noticed this mole and being super curious, I got up really close to the glass and I checked it out and I noticed that it had irregular borders, it was raised and discolored and uh, I'm, I'm a pre-med student and I've had the opportunity to volunteer on an oncology uh, ward and so I, I knew that these were hallmarks of skin cancer and I decided at that moment that I needed to find a way to tell him. I'm, I'm, I want you to be my doctor. You noticed it from that far away. That's incredible. <laughs> um, so, Nadia, it, it couldn't have been easy for you to get his attention and him also not think you're completely nuts, right? Like... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I was dressed in all Kraken gear. I mean, I had a squid hat on, I had my jersey on. So I looked like a hater uh, and I was very well aware of that, but I knew that the only way I was going to be able to talk to him was to show him a note on my phone through the glass. So I, I went on my phone and I wrote up the mole on the back of your neck is possibly cancerous. Please go see a doctor. And I bolded mole cancer and doctor because I knew he was only going to be able to look at this for, I mean, just a split second. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of the period, everyone kind of left. We had a little bit of a private rare moment where Red was in front of me. And I slammed my phone up against the plexiglass and I just knocked my fist on the glass as hard as I could. He kind of ignored me at first. So I did it again and I smiled and I pointed to, to you know, make make him uh, make yeah. myself seem super friendly uh, and you know thank goodness he looked uh, and that was kind of a moment where he he looked he shrugged and he walked away and I, I regretted it after doing after doing that because I thought oh goodness you know that was inappropriate he probably knows about it and my worst nightmare was that he would think it was a really sick joke from you know a fan of the other side and that you know he wouldn't get it checked out for that reason so I was stressed out about it for a couple of weeks, but my family, they ensured me that it was it was the right thing to do. Oh, absolutely. It's an amazing thing to do for someone. Uh, Red, I mean, you, <laughs> you had, what were you thinking? I mean, you had to have been like, first of all, this crazy opposing fan, <laughs> like it's trying to get my attention, probably trying to yell at me. And what does this message say? And does it mean, um, you know, so you, you had to have been thinking like, what is happening, right? Whenever she's just trying to get your attention. Yeah, I I didn't know I had a mole on the back of my neck, so I read this message and I'm like, uh, okay, but I just I kind of kept going all in one motion. I was doing something, saw the note, kept going, and went in for the intermission to do the stuff we do in the intermission. And then um, it wasn't we flew home that night, and it wasn't till the next day that I I asked Jessica. I said, hey Jess, is there a mole on the back of my neck? And she looked and she's like, yeah. And then I told her the story and. She's like, oh, we should, um, so I, we're going to see a doctor about this, which luckily uh, I can, when we play home games, we have doctors at the home game. So I followed up with the doctor and he didn't like it. And then the following home game, they cut it out. Um, and then we uh, got the biopsy and sure enough, the phone call is we're going to diagnose you of cancer and we're going to cure you of cancer in the same phone call. Oh and my so, gosh. Yeah, I, I, um, wow. I, you know, I owe so much to Nadia for pointing that out. I mean, damn straight. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> um, that's so amazing. Like a, a stranger just like helped. That's so beautiful. I love this story. So how are you feeling today, Red? 
I feel great. Uh, you know, I've had a second procedure uh, where uh, they take more out and they got a biopsy back of that. And there was no more traces of malignant melanoma. Um, and so now I just wow. go about getting checked every six to eight months and away we go. We have a few women joining us now who like red are very thankful. Let's say hello to Red's mama, Dorothy, his daughter, Ashley, and his partner, Jessica. What's up, ladies? Hi. Hi hello. Hi. Welcome to the show, ladies. I love all your color that you're wearing. Um, so, Dorothy, I'm going to start with you. I know that hearing the news that your son had cancer especially, obviously, was difficult for you, right? It was, it was terrifying. I, I'd already lost um, a two children, a grandchild, and a husband to cancer, and I wasn't, I couldn't lose another one. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. That is a lot of loss in your family. It is, it is a lot, and and uh, I I can't tell you how, how thankful I am to Nadia. I just, um, I just, she's, she saved my son's life and she saved my life. Thank, thank you, Nadia. I'd love to give you a big hug. One, one day when this dumb pandemic goes away, this will happen. <laughs> oh. So Jessica and Ashley, yeah. um, what do you want to say to Nadia? You know, she, she saved the life of my, my very best friend and uh, I saved Ashley's dad and Dorothy's son and Cheryl's brother and you know thinking of a life without Brian here giving his light that he does into the world mm -hmm. thinking about what that could be like was re really unbearable for us and for me and um you know it kept us Nadia you kept us from a lot of heartbreak and you know we I can't I can't thank you enough Nadia thank you no there really there really are no words it's it's incredible Ashley what about you Nadia went out of her way to save a stranger because that's just who she is, and that stranger was my dad. If it wasn't for her, I would have lost so many memories with him, like softball tournaments, um, my high school graduation, walking me down the aisle at my wedding, um, and maybe even his grandchildren. Thanks to you, he will be around for all those amazing milestones. And I can't thank you enough. Oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> you know what? It is such an amazing thing too. Like Nadia, just to like, to be, you know, you've wanted to be a doctor for so long and then to find, like just reaffirm like what your life is and like what you're wanting to do. And look at what you're gonna be able to do for people. You know, in the future, this is your goal, you know, to be able to not only be able to help someone and say, hey, you need to get this checked out, but you're gonna be that person one day checking that out, you know? And after all this, Red was able to do something pretty rad to help you. You wanna tell everybody what that was? Yes, yes. So uh, as, you, as you said, um, I've wanted to be a doctor my entire life. I knew ever since I was a child, uh, but money was always an issue for, for me and my family. So I knew from a very young age that I had to do every club, every volunteering experience, uh, every sport so that I could earn scholarships to go to undergrad and grad school. Uh, and the teams knew this. And I mean, so they were so gracious. They they came together and gave me a $10,000 scholarship. They surprised me. Um, and really, this money will ease so much of the financial burden for me and really allow me to follow my dreams and, and become the doctor that I want to become. Yeah, it's a, well, and we want you to become a doctor. If you can do that just as a fan in the stands at an NHL game, imagine what you could do in a <laughs> in a doctor's office. I'm <laughs> like, good lord. Um, well, we've we've also got some more news for you, Nadia, to help make life in med school even easier. We're also going to give you another ten thousand dollars. How's that sound? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely, and thank y'all so much for sharing this amazing story and also to bring awareness to really get your moles checked out, guys. Really, you know, get the, keep those checkups and you never know, you know, and, and even if you see a stranger, you know, be a naughty and be like, hey, you might want to get that checked out. You never know.